will, I will start with a short presentation of uh, what we are doing in BioNTech. So this is a small joke because we are quite famous, but just because people uh, forget that we miss an uh, E, which is really important. So we are not making the vaccine, but still we are making some important things. <laughs> So, uh, what is BioNTech? First, I will start with the introduction. Um, um, first of all, we are 15 people. We have been created in 2013 and we are based on three different sites. One is in Narbonne, one is in Lyon, one is in Saint Malo. And what you can notice is that for us it was always important to keep some relation with the uh, center of research. So you can see that we are close to INRA in, uh, in Rennes. We are close, of course, to the LE of Narbonne because the enterprise comes from collaboration with the LE. And, uh, and in Lyon, it's because of it's the historical center. Uh, what we do is to develop some uh, digital strategy to optimize uh, analog digester and uh, wastewater treatment plant with specialties in monitoring, digitalization, and, uh, and optimize, optimizing of, uh, of plants. So we did develop three different solutions. I will start with the free solution and then of course I will detail what we are doing in the infrared. So the first one is an application for the characterization of the bio-waste or organic waste, to be more accurate. Uh, of course, we discussed that this morning. Um, the PhD uh, comes from uh, the first application with the idea to, uh, to leverage some, uh, some to leverage to, well, to Ah, to overlock some indirectities. Um, so this application um, arose to a characterization of the organic matter in terms of uh, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, kinetics, EMP, and, uh, and COD. So COD is the quantity of, uh, of energy which is inside the organic matter. So it basically gives a full characterization which should be useful for plant monitoring. And for us, of course, it's important to have the full characterization to do some monitoring to, to answer one of the questions of the um, What is interesting is that now we, are, we have been making the characterization of more than 1,000 yeah, substrate. So we can also have some reference and to give the position of one substrate depending on its level uh, to, to check if the composition is uh, relevant for this kind of, uh, of substrate or if it's totally different uh, based only on the label and we have also a uh, characterization. So, uh, second one that you can see in the LD if you're interested is a prototype, oh, sorry, it's an analyzer, it's not a prototype anymore, it's an analyzer, we made uh, currently 40 analyzer like that, uh, it's an on-site analyzer to um, get an estimation of VFA, ammonia, and uh, bicarbonate, pH, and alkalinity, which are the main most relevant variables to monitor on plants. But this time it's inside the digester to know if it's biologically performing or if it's having some issue of inhibition. Uh, well, and that, that sensor or analyzer is really interesting because it provides an accurate analysis on site, which were not really possible before. I will not go in detail with that, but it is really a relevant application for, uh, in particular, uh, farm plant monitoring. And the last one is a digital twin. It's a, it's a modeling approach to collect all the data from the plant, to process this data, to have a, a digital twin, which is a, a model of the plant, to represent what's happening in real time, to assess hidden variables such as the PFA, which are not measured in real time, and to also question the model to be able to optimize the working parameter, the operational parameter, to forecast how it will behave and to select the best operational parameter such as the feeding strategy. Uh, to conclude, we have a very particular approach of the monitoring uh, aspect uh, in uh, wastewater treatment plant and uh, anaerobic digester. So as you can see, we, we deal first with the characterization of the organic matter using the infrared analysis then of analyzing what is happening inside the digester of the analyzer snack. And once we have this two information, we compute that in a model which is capable of helping your operator to take good decision. And the last point, which is last but not least, is to bring some expertise to, um, to be at the side of the operator to help him to understand what uh, the data coming out from the model. Because it's not always easy to change your practice uh, from and very empirical uh, strategy to something which is more sophisticated. Um, currently, we deploy this kind of solution on more than 40 sites. 
for eight years. We have now two European patents and uh, some return of uh, experiment of experience, sorry, uh, on reduction of the operational cost, increasing the operational safety, increasing the biogas production, and of course, increasing the profitability of the plant. So, and of course, <laughs> not to forget, uh, all of that thing uh, was made in collaboration uh, with uh, the NPE, uh, which uh, I, I think a lot because we made, I think, a fruitful collaboration. Uh, so I will start uh, focusing really on IR scan, which is linear and prior analysis, um, and trying to explain you how we we get from really the innovation to the industrial application. Because I think that I have nothing to teach here about the scientific uh, application, but really it can be interesting to to see which kind of uh, of route we need to to go through uh, from innovation to to industrial application. So first of all, uh, a short story of uh, <laughs> it's okay. a, a short a short story of the product innovation. Um, it's it's a, a long term of uh, collaboration. It's a long path of collaboration uh, from this product. So I um, I didn't put on this project the label of the LP and BioNTech because all the project of course involved both LP and BioNTech. But since the creation, we uh, we develop the infrared application for um, four different projects. So the first one was my PhD, basically. Uh, the second one was a project I mapped. It was a global innovation project of, of 3 million euro for two years, involving as well Pierstea, which is now in Rai, uh, in, uh, in Red, NG, and Akajul uh, with uh, ADEM uh, financing. Uh, a second PhD, which is the, the one of uh, Alexander, and uh, the project Biogas Rio, which is a European project uh, hosted in LPE. Uh, working on the front application that I will present, and you will see that we still have some projects that we try to to get financed uh, because it, it's a topic that needs to, to to be continued. A second point which is interesting to me is that it was a lot of science behind and a lot of publications. So for each, uh, I, I just keep kept the, the most. Uh, Oh, sorry, the R&D project, and we can see that currently we have more than um, so nine publication and one patent on the infrared application. So, which means that there was a, a lot of science behind to go from um, really the, the ID to the innovation. And I hope that in uh, in Biogas Rio we will have new application and new new publication and maybe maybe some more in, uh, in the PhD of, uh, of Alexandre. Um, so coming back to where is the first innovation part? Um, the idea was that it was a need, to, and Alexander explained, Alexander, sorry, explained that quite uh, quite good this morning. If there was a need to get an accurate and fast analysis of the biochemical composition, the performances of, uh, of the biogas production and the kinetics. And from what was existing at the time before starting the PhD, it was clearly a, a lack of, of relevant analysis because you can see that every kind of analysis was good for just one point. And in one point, I mean, is the result accurate and is the analysis fast enough to be in accordance with the industrial application, which is basically less than a week, because if you need to wait two months to know if you can introduce your organic matter inside your plant or not, it's not relevant. You need to take a decision in one or one day or one week. So um, the most relevant application for us was the neon thread because it already demonstrated that it can be used for biochemical metal potential and that it is a really fast uh, analysis. So we did focus on uh, working with neon thread analysis of biochemical composition and kinetics. I will not detail the part on biochemical composition prediction because it was not really a challenge since it has been demonstrated on many of our applications, specifically on food application. But for the kinetics of methane production, it was a bit more complicated because it involves bacterial activity and substrate composition. So the first thing that uh, I wanted to highlight in what we did is was on data augmentation because it was quite complicated or expensive to get some data uh, of, of reference because 
one PMP, for instance, it's two months, and it's two months with a lot of labor behind. So it's really labor intensive. For the kinetics, it's the same. So we did involve mixing the substrate to because the reference data can be calculated as a, a sum or an average, a ponderated average of the mixture, but the spectra is really different because you have a lot of interaction that, uh, that we spoke about this morning. So we, we made some mixture, sorry, you cannot see it, but we, we made some mixture, we measure the spectra of the mixture and we calculate it using error modeling of just average, uh, the biochemical composition, the PMP and the kinetics of the mixture. So we, this was one of the first points that we which were really making the PhD successful. And the second one, the challenge was to estimate the kinetics. And estimating the kinetics is not that easy because a, a kinetics is um, basically the output of a model and an experience. And predicting a value of the model of a model is quite complicated because using a model, you are making an interpretation of the data and it's not directly correlated with the biochemical composition. So we had to find an analysis or, or way of interpreting this data, which, is, which does not depend on experimental, uh, oh, yeah, so yes, I guess, uh, or error, and does not depend on a really too high level interpretation. So what we did is that we Really, we, we based on our, our analysis on the experimental data, but we validated the model on the experimental data, which is basically IDM1, to, to have a representation, a mathematical representation of the data. And then we predicted all the data based on the model, and thanks to that, we get rid of endogenous production, which is basically the digestion of the bacteria themselves, so it has nothing to do with the substrate, and also with some uh, experimental uh, issues like uh, it was not exactly the same quantity, there was an issue during the calibration, during the experiment, it was a failure in the biosensor and so on. And at the end, to have a simple analysis of the data, we just selected some relevant point to estimate at the time that we need to create, to produce a percentage of the PMP. So at the end, and uh, it's quite complicated in this graph because you cannot see the, uh, the raw part, but we had 90 point of time, which are from 5% to 100% of the PMP curves. And for each substrate, we had this 90 points, so creating 19 different PLS models. And basically, it works pretty well because this is all in all uh, the prediction of all the percentage types. So, but it's in, what you can see is that in that is uh, the prediction of the of the time of biodegradation of the substrate. And you can see that it perfectly works with on the left cross validation and on the right and the blue, uh, so it's quite the opposite, sorry. Uh, you can see the validation and it perfectly works. And I can not show it to you, but if you use any of our methods of interpretation of the curves, like directly the parameter of genetics of the exponential uh, curves, it, it doesn't work at all. And just one point to notice here, we have, we have some outliers, uh, uh, it's not really outliers, it's points which are difficult to predict here and here, and it's basically fats because we did not add a lot of fats in, uh, in our database. And the last point is identifi identifiability, because for the first and last percent, it's quite complicated because it depends really on how you make the experiment. But it's not the most relevant point, point to estimate the kinetics. So, um, as you can see, there is still, even if it was a good proof of concept, and we, thanks to that, it was really a, a short translation from innovation to application, because at the end of the PhD, we had already an application running uh, to predict sugar, proteins, lipids, COD, BMP, and kinetics in approximately four days. Um, but still, it was an issue because the model was not robust enough on some kind of substrate which are not present in the database, such as uh, by waste and, uh, and fats. So we, we had one challenge, which was going from really this innovation to something more robust uh, in an uh, industrial way. So the first thing is, is what, was to increase the database. And increasing the database when you are alone working on your database, it's quite easy because you are the only one making the data, you know how you store the data, you know what you did exactly. But when it will involve many different operators, many sometimes different labs to create the database, the challenge is to create a database that can be exploited. So this is 
basically named Data Lake. So um, this image comes from Amazon, but it's pretty similar to, to our challenges. From a data swamp, which is basically a database which is impossible to exploit because there is many unqualified data that you cannot use to calibrate a model because behind the numbers there is a lot of different realities. So to do that, first thing that we did was, yeah, first it's not only slide to work on the protocols themselves because we saw that for some protocols there was a lot of interpretation from the operator itself and it's not possible to rely on interpretation of the operator if you have many different kind of operator it's, it's really um, an important source of uh, causes of error um, and the second one was to develop a software to store all this data and to make uh, an interface between the, the operator and the database and on this software what we did is that you can uh, enter all the variables that you measure for every analysis that you do you can collect all the spectra and what is really important for us is that all the data that you collect depend also on the physical state of the matter. So if you apply the drying, if you apply the uh, freezing, if you apply freeze drying, grinding or whatever, you also store this information like that. You really know on which kind of uh, physical treatment of data uh, was your, um, okay. You, you know your spectrum and you know your, your physical treatment. Um, so, and this was very important for us. And thanks to that, we did develop a database, thanks also to the collaboration of BLB and uh, MPT and um, We did uh, develop, um, we went from a, a calibration base of 340 samples uh, at the end of the PhD to more than 700 currently. And uh, what we can see is that it works pretty well. Uh, I think it's even more robust because we are mixing the operators. So we, you are getting like that a bit rid of the uh, dependencies to, to the operator, so it works pretty well for all the parameters that we made previously, even for the kinetics. Um, and what you can see uh, specifically on the, on the COD, but also the liquid that is coming uh, from the same uh, issues, um, there is a discontinuity on, on the COD prediction, so there is a database with fat and non fat, and it's something that we cannot solve. Uh, why we cannot solve it? It's because you cannot have a mixture of half fat and half sugar because it, it's impossible to mix it because fat is hydrophobic and uh, over are hydrophilic and it's really complicated to mix them and when you try to mix it, you do not really know what is really seen by the inside uh, spectrometer. Um, and the last one was the impact of some uh, mineral salts, so I do not really know what the impact because we didn't have time to explore that, but we can see that uh, for the surge uh, of wastewater treatment plant, if there is uh, the addition of uh, chloride uh, iron, uh, it's impossible to predict correctly the task. So there is an impact on the spectra which is not taken into, taken into account into, into the database. So for now, we, we just solve this issue by, uh, by taking a more usual or classical way of making the analysis just for wastewater treatment plant and for specific kind of search. Um, last point uh, is, okay, we, we made this, uh, these things to have a relevant analysis for anaerobic digestion. So now our ambition is to deploy that to um, a global uh, run, a more global range of application, going from the methane of the anaerobic digestion to global monitoring of the organic waste, uh, making some, for instance, some hydrogen platform. So what we did first, okay, uh, I will just explain to you the concept before to go into detail in what we did. The, the concept behind is to make an optimization of the, of the of the use of uh, organic matter. So behind that is that there is some uh, organic waste that are available but not characterized currently. And so there is no direct connection from what is available to the needs of uh, the valorization units. And our idea is to use the characterization to get a, a unique uh, characterization of the Nyanfrad analysis, sorry, to get a unique characterization of the organic waste from one side and to use our digital twin from the other, other side to, to be sure to correctly estimate what the needs uh, in terms of organic matter of the valorization plant. And thanks to some algorithm, you can make a platform which will make it real time a better match. 
taking into account also the cost of transportation or of the value of the product uh, in different ways of valorization, such as insect farming, uh, digestion, composting, or with water treatment plants. While the benefit could be impressive if we go at the scale of Europe, because there is still a lot of um, organic matter which is not correctly valorized, of course, we need not to underestimate the collection of the waste, which is not mature enough to, to have this, feel, uh, this full picture. Um, so what we are currently doing to, to, to go to this kind of application is, first of all, to enlarge what we are doing. And for that, since for anaerobic digestion, we have the BMP, which is the maximum quantity of, uh, of methane that we can produce. It's not the case for any application. So we are going more in details of uh, describing the biochemical composition, for instance, predicting the sulfur composition, uh, because it can affect many processes, predicting uh, the amount of simple sugar, the amount of, uh, of fibers, uh, the amount of lignins, and so and, and for source, for instance. Like that, we, we have to have a full characterization, just one analysis, and to have something which is flexible to determine the potential in one kind of application or another kind of application. And that's uh, something that we develop in Biogas Rio, which is the collaboration validation curve for the sulfur production so it's already something which is working just for the sulfur we have with the small issues and i think you can see the performance of calibration is that there is the organic sulfur and the mineral sulfur and it's not exactly the same impact on spectra and we are missing a little bit of data to have something which is really accurate but still it can tell you if there is some sulfur in your performance or not which are the objective. And the last one is, of course, if you want to make a platform for real-time application, is uh, the PhD of Alexandre. And uh, I could present to think that it's not impossible, but fully possible <laughs> to, to make this application, uh, is to, to have something which is more time efficient and can be made on site or directly on the waste collection to, to have the analysis almost real time uh, is going from the application that we have currently with the free spraying and analysis, which is time consuming. And even if it's not a big deal, it's still a bit labor intensive. So it requires more effort uh, than just one kind of analyzer, which we're combining all this analysis together and being capable to do it on, on raw matters. So this is something that we are developing and we will continue to develop. Uh, in Biogas Rio and uh, going to get the um, And the idea is to predict all the parameters that you are currently predicting, but also adding uh, the obligation or environment. And that's everything. So thank you. Merci Cyril. Vous avez des questions Vous avez des remarques sur la discussion Merci. Thank you.